Hello everyone, this is Showtime 112. If you follow global politics in the early 1990s, the name Alexander Rutskoy might sound familiar. He was the Vice President of Russia between 1991 and 1993. In fact, he was the only Vice President of Russia because the office was abolished after that. Rutskoy participated in the impeachment of President Boris Yeltsin. He was even briefly proclaimed acting President of Russia but soon ended up in prison where he spent about six months. He continued his political career after his release, but the thing we are interested in is that before his political career, he was a military pilot who participated in the Afghanistan war. He was the commanding officer of the 378th Independent Attack Regiment during the second personnel rotation, which initiated in October 1985. The unit was equipped with the Hoi-25, one of the most important Soviet aircraft of the conflict. This was the phase of the war in which things began to change and some new weapons were introduced on both sides. Sukhoi-25 started to carry new laser-guided missiles such as H-25 and H-29. Rutskoy personally flew the first mission with these weapons in April 1986, employing it to seal a number of entrances to caves used by the rebels for shelter and storage near the city of Khost. Later that year, the Bujaheddin forces started to receive the famous Stinger shoulder launch missile. It's a lesser known fact that even before that, the Mujahideen received similar but less capable weapons from the CIA such as FIM-43 Red Eye. The date is now 4 April 1986 and Lieutenant Colonel Rutskoy, the commanding officer of the 378 attack regiment is leading a four aircraft flight in an attack on Jawar resupply complex. Rutskoy's airplane was carrying a camera for post-strike reconnaissance. After he and other Sukhoi 25s made their attacks, Rutskoy made one more pass over the target for the purposes of damage assessment. Needless to say, a relatively low level straight pass made him an easy target. Thank <laughs> you. 
His airplane was disabled by a combination of gun hits and a shoulder launch missile, possibly a Red Eye or Estrella. Rutsko ejected at the last moment, suffering back injuries and a broken arm upon landing. But fortunately for him, he was rescued by a unit of Democratic Republic of Afghanistan Army operating in the vicinity. This was the first Ahoy 25 shot down in the second personnel rotation for the 378 regiment. It wouldn't be the last shoot down for Rutskoy. Exactly two years later, Rutskoy returned to Afghanistan, this time as a full colonel and deputy commanding officer aviation of the 40th Army. His position didn't keep him from flying. He wasn't less aggressive either. He appeared to seek revenge for his 1986 shootdown. But now let's focus on another aspect of the Afghanistan war. Pakistan was a very important factor providing shelter and training for the Mujahideen rebels. Some of their bases were located just across the border, and as the war progressed, Soviets became more aggressive and started to launch airstrikes into Pakistani airspace. In the early 1980s, Pakistan lacked modern fighters. They initially tried to intercept Soviet intruders with their F-6, a Chinese-built MiG-19, but they were never successful. Pakistani government then turned to an old ally, USA, for a purchase of a new fighter. In 1981, they persuaded the US to sell them F-16, and the first of them were delivered in early 1983. The first confirmed kills for the Pakistani F-16s came in May 1986, when they shot down two Sukhoi 22s belonging to the Democratic Republic of Afghanistan, the pro-Soviet communist government. There were two more confirmed kills of the Afghan Air Force aircraft throughout 1986 and 1987. One F-16 was also lost in that period, most likely shot down accidentally by another F-16. The date is now 4 August 1988. A pair of Soviet Sohoi 24s were detected by Pakistani radars. They seem to be heading towards Miran Shah camp in Pakistani territory. The camp is called a refugee camp by Pakistani sources and a rebel training camp by the Soviet sources. It could have easily been both. To counter the Soviet Sohois, two F-16s from the 14th Squadron were launched from Kamara Air Base. They were flown by Squadron Leader Ather Bokhari and Squadron Leader Tofik Raja. But after a while, two pilots were informed by the ground control that two Soviet aircraft turned back. The F-16 slowed down and it seemed like this would turn into another long combat air patrol. But then, ground control called contacts, 30 degrees left of them at about 15 miles. Squadron leader Bahari turned and detected him by his radar. The contacts were in fact a flight of four Soviet Sukhoi 25s led by Colonel Rutskoy. Their objective was Miran Shah training camp. Rutskoy's wingman was supposed to drop illumination bombs and Rutskoy would then attack air defense positions.
Soviet attack would however be spoiled by the two F-16s. Squadron leader Bohari was given permission to engage his target. He achieved an infrared head-on lock after which the target started to turn right. He engages afterburners, approached within two and a half miles, and launched an AIM-9L. Bahati observed his missile hit the Sahoy. He then turned left, descended to a lower altitude and dispensed chaff and flares. While looking back, he mistook some of his flares for a missile, but his ground controller assured him that there were no aircraft behind him. According to Russian sources, Colonel Rutskoy initiated a hard turn after being blocked by the F-16. He apparently did it to draw the enemy into a fight and give the rest of his flight a chance to escape across the border. Rutskoy ejected from his aircraft and he was captured the next evening. He was released two weeks later after some diplomatic pressure from the USSR and possibly some intelligence service to their Pakistani counterparts. Pakistan confirmed a total of 10 kills of Soviet or Afghan aircraft during the conflict. There were many more claims that were not confirmed, mostly by F-16s but some also by Mirage trees. A likely explanation might be that these shootdowns took place in Afghan airspace, or at least that Soviet or Afghan aircraft fell on the Afghan side. The aircraft flown in this video is an F-16C Block 50. Historically the F-16 flown here was the A model, which we don't have at DCS World. Also the skin used belongs to 11 Squadron, because 14 Squadron skin is not available. If you like this video, be sure to press the like button. If you want to see some more of the Pakistani air to air kills from the Afghanistan war period, let me know in the comments. Support the channel on Patreon if you're able to, subscribe if you haven't already, and keep watching Showtime 112.